What's going on? Welcome back to the Sully Show. We are back from Christmas in our normal Sully Show studio. Slash, uh, this wall is now behind me rather than a different wall. Um, we have something pretty exciting today. You can see it right here. This will probably be a bottle to display for now until I find something to get them a little bit more up front centered. Uh, I'll hopefully better keep my bottles here so y'all can see it the whole video. But let's grab it for now. And it's this Basil Hayden Toast. Uh, I've heard so many mixed reviews about this, I had to try it for myself. I've heard people say it's the best witch you've ever had. People say it's mediocre. People say it's absolutely terrible. Give it to your friends. Don't drink it. Um, I've heard all sorts of different views about this. And, you know, every bourbon's going to have different views. But this one has been uh, probably one of the most controversial ones I have seen and read about in, like, my whiskey Facebook groups and so on and so forth. The Basil Hayden Toast. The only difference between this and regular Basil Hayden is it, they use brown rice, USA grown brown rice, instead of rye in uh, the Basil Hayden Toast. It gives it, makes it a little less spicy, a little more sweet, and they also have a uh, different aging process where they age it and then they do a secondary age in a toasted flash charred oak barrel. Okay. This is a product of Jim Beam Distilleries. I think that's like the big name. Um, they might be owned by a different company at this point. Not too sure. But whoever makes Jim Beam makes the same product. It is a Jim Beam product. Okay. Very cool bottle. It has a lot of, I mean, all, all the labeling is really neat and it has a lot of interesting information on it, such as the notes, the, the batch number, uh, just, you know, who, who is it made by, different cool stuff. The cork, does have a cork. Um, it looks like a synthetic cork, which is good, because the one real cork I've had, had a bad experience with, and now I'm not a cork fan. Well, I'm not a real cork fan, I like synthetic corks. Um, but I'm mean, kind of cool there, and of course you get this real cool Basil Hayden band going all the way around the bottle. But obviously you're not here for a bottle review. You're here for the inside of the bottle review. So we are going to go ahead and dial you delve. I'm trying to be fancy here on the Sully Show, more uh, high class and stuff. So we're going to delve into uh, some notes on the Basil Hayden Toast. Okay, so it is a $50 bottle. I, I'm pretty sure that's about what I bought it at. It was right around 50 bucks. However, according to the Booze app, it's B-O-O-Z. Yeah, so according to the B Booze app, it's B O O Z app, it gives you price points on whiskeys and stuff because the secondary market is just so crazy. Um, sixty dollars is kind of a fair price to pay for anything. You know, sixty or less is pretty fair to get it for that. It is forty percent alcohol coming in at eighty proof, so you know, not nothing crazy high, but on the higher side of your typical things. The smell is toasted oak, dried fruit, and caramelized sugar. Okay, not caramel. Way different. This is caramelized sugar. Okay, the taste, it, it seems pretty basic. It's supposed to be toasted oak and caramel. Okay, so it should have some sweetness in there. Toasted oak and caramel is about all there is. And the finish on this should just be some more sweet caramel. I'm sorry, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. The taste should be to toasted oak along with vanilla. Okay, some vanilla sweet. There's some vanilla in there, and then the finish should be some sweet caramel. So let's go ahead and bust into the Basil Hayden Toast right here. Got our Grey Goose glasses today. This came out with a Grey Goose Christmas kit I got. They're pretty big glasses, but they're kind of neat. Pretty basic, but kind of cool. I'm a big uh, bottle and glass guy. I think it's real neat when you put cool designs and stuff into them. So that's why I talk about it so much. It's, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's one of the weird things about me. To hear that cork. Sounds delicious. Pour it up here. <clears throat> Slap that back on our shelf. Grab our glass and let's go. It definitely smells very ethanol y. 
Um, you know, a lot of just alcohol smell. However, I feel like I can pick up some oak, some dried fruit type of thing. I still don't want to say like, oh, that's definitely dried fruit. I'm still not an expert. I don't really get caramel sugar. It doesn't smell that sugary. Um, but there's something in there that I would kind of, you know, consider is probably dried fruit from the other whiskeys I smelled it. Also have dried fruit and picking up some of that smell in here. So, you know, we're, we're going to say I can smell some dried fruit and some toasted oak. We're going to say that. Could be mind playing tricks on me, but that's what we're going to go with. We smell some dried fruit, we smell some to toasted oak, but it definitely does smell fairly ethanol -y, very alcoholic. Very oaky. Um, it really is. Ooh. Okay. Let's start with the burn. We always start with the burn. Start with the burn. Um, little to none, I would say. It, it, it's strong. Once we put ice on it, it's probably to go away. It's probably to be too much for it at that point. Um, I think the ice will overpower it. However, drinking it neat, it is very delicious. It, it's, it warms you up. I, mean, I, I can feel it in my throat, down in my stomach, but it, it's a nice warm feeling. You know, it, it warms you, it, smooth, it soothes you, it calms you. It really is a perfect, perfect feel to the whiskey. It's not too harsh, just enough to let you know that drinking some whiskey and it smooths your soul, warms you up, relaxes you, and just puts you in a nice, nice mindset. As far as the flavors go, it's, wow, um, I'm very impressed here. So it, it's oaky at first, for sure. It's, it's powerful with the oak, which I, mean, I feel like it should be because it's toasted. That's why this whole thing, is it's, it's toasted, so it should be oaky. I feel like you should feel, you should taste a lot of toasted wood in there. I definitely feel like you get that. And then the back of my tongue is really coated with sweetness and caramel and deliciousness. Um, I don't know if I taste a whole lot of vanilla off the bat. I feel like the oak is really powerful. However, the back of my tongue, I'm definitely getting some sweetness, definitely feeling some caramel, tasting some caramel, and when it's on the back of my tongue, it almost feels sweet as well. Like it almost feels like it coats in my tongue a little bit of sugar almost, if that makes any sense. Absolutely delicious, well, well made whiskey though. This might be, I, I, I say this a lot, and I probably say this too much, and I might just have too much of a broad liking or whatever, but this honestly might be one of my new favorites. However, I probably won't buy it much due to the price point. I don't like buying really expensive whiskey because I drink everything I buy, I drink everything I buy is fun more fast. Um, so I don't like buying super expensive whiskey. However, this stuff is very good. And again, it's, it's very delicious neat. It's one of those, I'm a little nervous to put ice in it. I almost don't want to put ice in it because I'm worried it's going to mess with the perfect balance of things we have now. But obviously you guys know that I have to put ice in it. I have no choice because that's what science calls for. And as a scientist, I must do that for y'all. So let me go ahead and take one more sip of this. Just neat. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy the beautiful essence. Mm. Delicious. Mm. But uh, you guys know the drill now. Let me get some ice to put in here. See if that changes anything. And we'll get right back to you. And we are back with our Basil Hayden Toast Iced Down for the second part of our review. See how it is? Mm. I feel like it's a little bit spicier now. Hmm. Hang on. I feel like it's a little bit spicier up front, however, 
pretty much just as sweet on the back of my tongue. So I feel like it, it, it kind of took away the oak. Like I said, it took away the burn. You don't really notice any of that anymore. Um, you know, it's pretty ice. And I, it hasn't even been on ice for that long. I, like, I put it on ice and hit play and start recording here. So it hasn't been on ice long at all. And it's already lost a lot of that feeling. Um, but like I said, it's, all, it's, it's kind of spicy towards the front. But still sweet and enjoyable towards the back. It's not unenjoyable with the spicy. It's not unenjoyable, but it, it, it really does completely change at the front. It changes the idea, the flavor, everything about the whiskey in the first half. Completely changes. It's like that meme. It's like, you had me in the first half, not gonna lie. I lost my hat. Whatever. Um. Yeah, so I mean, completely, completely changed in... The, sec or the first half. Pretty much the same in the second half, though. Again, this is another one I would recommend drinking neat. Um, definitely at first. You know, I mean, as I always say, try it both ways all the time. But if you don't always do that, you know, you don't have to listen to me. So if you don't, at least try this one neat for me. Okay, at least do that for me. So the least you can do besides subscribing and commenting and liking my videos. You can try this neat. Okay, that's like the fifth best thing you can do for me personally. Um, it is very, very enjoyable. So try it both ways, obviously, but I think neat is way better. I'm gonna have to give it a five neat and a four point three on ice. Okay, that's a nine point three overall score. That is one of the best we have had. Uh, in the in, in the history of the Sully show. You know, obviously Jameson got a 10 out of 10. Um, but I think this is probably, you know, out of the, after all the Jamesons, this is probably the highest scorer that we have had. 9.3 out of 10. Not bad at all. But very enjoyable. Go pick y'all sums up. Would recommend. After the Basil Hayden as a comparison, if I can find some and uh, afford it. I'll have to pick some up to do a comparison someday. Maybe even a side-by-side, -side if I still have this by the time I buy the Basil Hayden. But that wraps it up for this episode of The Sully Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for bearing with me as I was filming on vacation and, you know, backgrounds and lighting and everything was just all sorts of different and crazy. Not the lighting's great now, but thank you for bearing with me on that one. I'm glad we're back. Well, I can't really say that. But we are back in the studio. Hopefully we'll be banking out some great new content soon for y'all. Might try to deck out the studio a little bit more and get it a little bit more, uh, you know, filmed. Or a little more comfortable filmed rather than just looks like a spare bedroom like it is. But like this, like this uh, video. Comment on it. Share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out my other videos for more great alcohol-related content. Keep tuning in for more to come. And as always, keep drinking. Cheers.